like limits. That really. Oh. Okay. And at the time, I had a hysterectomy, and I had to take this hormone therapy called Premarin, mm -hmm. which stands for pregnant mare urine. Mm -hmm. No wonder I felt like eating oatmeal and sugar cakes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really whine anymore, but it kind of whinny. <laughs> Where are you going? Honey? <laughs> if my husband suggests a roll in the hay, I just didn't mind. <laughs> Five years ago, I hung up my scissors, and I've been speaking full-time and writing full-time. Wow. And I've been speaking now for about 14 years. It's going all right, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's amazing. Um, I started off in the comedy, because that was really a goal of mine, and then uh, there was a story done about me in the local paper about winning the Twin Cities Funniest Person Contest, and the interesting thing was that I, had, had, I was dealing with cancer at the same time. So when people were worried about doing their three minutes of comedy for the very first time. I was not worried about that. I was worried about pooping on the audience, honestly. <laughs> I couldn't get that bag to stay on, and I was doing it anyway. I kept going and I kept trying. You know, I kept trying. So, so remember I said comedy, and then the second thing I wanted to do with my life was to um, go to college. I never got to college. I bought my first business when I was 21, and I never went to college because I was too busy. So I went to college when I was 42 and discovered I love to write. And so then I wrote that first book, really for my children. But then I called a Pollister, because I use their products, I called a Pollister and said, I'm going to be speaking at the National Convention. Would you please provide a book for everyone? And they said, yes. And then they provided books for you guys, too. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> then when I went to my local ostomy support group, that's when I learned about you people with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease and other bowel issues. And so I started realizing, oh my gosh, this is very, very difficult what these people have been living with. And I wanted to, I wanted you to provide stories for me that were funny about having an ostomy. So people that were brand new with an ostomy wouldn't feel all that despair that we feel and just stay there, that they would move forward, okay? And, and I, at that time is when I learned about ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm just so lucky I just had cancer. I mean, that's how I tell people, I'm just a lucky I'd like to buy a bowel, please. That's pretty good. And then what would we do without our nurses and our doctors right? and our caregivers? Who's, here? who's a caregiver for people here? Who, who's here that loves someone that has an ostomy? Yeah, very nice. Very important job, isn't it, to be a caregiver? So I asked for stories from caregivers, nurses, doctors, and patients, and that's how we got bedpan banter. The title comes from a story from my father about a bedpan and bantering. So, um, and, and the next, uh, we're working on another book right now for um, children and parents of children, people that had ostomy since they were born and what their life has been like up to this point. So hopefully that'll be born in less than two years and we'll see what happens with that. So um, I'm going to just read one story in closing and then we're done, okay? So you enjoyed this time today? Yeah. yeah. by a nurse. Her name is Pamela Goldstein. She's from uh, Ontario, Canada. I met her at Irma Bombeck's Writers' Conference. Oh, yeah. And uh, Irma Bombeck died on the very first day I ever did comedy. Oh. And so I think I've got part of her in me. Um, and I met her husband and her children at the Irma Bombeck's Writers' Conference. And I, I know a lot about Irma Bombeck because she's just a wonderful person. So Pamela and I met there, and she sent me this story. and. Um, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Hannah was 106 years old, tiny in stature, frail as a sparrow and toothless. She was a proud woman and she held her head high with nobility the likes of which I had never seen, not even in Queen Elizabeth. She was in the hospital for a small stroke she had on Easter Sunday. That was 40 years ago. I remember her as if it were yesterday. Now it's a bit more time. She was a young, young nurse at the time. And Hannah said, I was the first one in my family to have an education. I became a teacher. Couldn't ever teach in a white school, though. I had to wait until I moved here to Canada. Where are you from? Pamela asked. Born and raised in Georgia, I was. During the American Civil War. I read this just for you, Georgia, back there. <laughs> My mom and father and me were slaves until that war ended. I was seven years old at the time. Wow, you lived through that war? Pamela asked. I surely did, child. 
None of my brothers survived, but I never knew them well. They'd been sold to a farmer down the road when I was still a baby. Well, what do you remember about that time, Hannah? She shrugged her shoulders. Nothing much other than being hungry. But I do remember one day in particular, the day I met President Abraham Lincoln. She plopped down in the chair next to her. You met Abraham Lincoln? What was he like? Oh my, well, he was a very tall man, thin with broad shoulders. Kind of ugly, actually. He had bad teeth. But there was something wonderful about him. He had kind eyes. You could tell just from looking at him that he was a wise man. She took a sip of tea. I didn't talk to him long, maybe a minute or two, but I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, be proud, child. Always be proud of who you are and where your family came from. There's no shame in having been a slave. But you're free now, and it's your responsibility as a free person to do good in the world. And I believed him. She told all her students what President Lincoln said to her. And she had a permanent mark to remember him by. After she shook President Lincoln's hand, her right hand turned white with that skin disease, little eyeball. And she had a white hand the rest of her life. So she could prove she met President Abraham Lincoln. And Pamela went to her funeral. Pamela ended up going to her funeral, found out she lied to Pamela. She was really 110 at the time. <laughs> she didn't want anyone to know. But she uh, was a remarkable woman. She spent her whole summers going back to the South and teaching African Americans to read and write. She really made a lot out of her life. And I, I share that story with you today because President Lincoln told that little girl, Hannah, when she was seven years old, to be proud. Never be ashamed of having been a slave. Now, each one of us here, we got things to be proud of. Each one of us. Huh? And if you have an ostomy, be proud of the fact that you have an ostomy because you're living because of your ostomy. Your life is enhanced because of your ostomy. Your life is saved because of your ostomy. Never be ashamed of having an ostomy. Never be ashamed yeah. of going out and doing the things you really want to do. And if you don't have an ostomy, strive for what you want to do. Be the best you can. Let's just keep going out and doing good in the world. So from President Lincoln to little Hannah, from little Hannah to little Pamela, the nurse, from the young nurse to Brenda, from Brenda to you all here in Auburn, Let's just keep going out and doing good in the world. Share your story. Share your love. Thanks so much for being here today.